All right, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is Christian from it's Tribeca Trade Group with your weekend video, and um, definitely a lot of <laughs> a lot of events to talk about for next week. And um, we're going to go through some of those events to watch. Uh, we're going to go through the technicals in the major U.S. indices, uh, as well as a couple international indices, and um, also going to look at some some commodities as well, some gold and uh, and bonds <clears throat> in addition. So certainly have a lot to go through next week you know so right now it's about 12 o'clock uh, Eastern we should know the results of the French election in a couple hours it sounds like right now it sounds like Le Pen is going to advance um, I'm not sure yet uh, based on the polls who who the other candidate is going to be but um, it sounds like we're going to have another couple weeks of this so this is a, an event that's going to linger for another two weeks unless something shocking comes out here in the afternoon so we can't put this one behind us I actually regardless of the winner and I know there's going to be some market there should be some market volatility depending on who wins but I almost would rather have them just declare a winner and let's get it over with rather than have this over our heads for another couple of weeks but it is what it is can't get everything you want so <laughs> but uh, that the next round is going to be uh, May 7th again um, don't know the results yet but it's just it sounds like two candidates will be advancing rather than one winner being declared today so um, we'll be returning to this uh, I guess in a couple of weeks so for next week um, we do have the possibility of a government shutdown. We'll probably know that by the end of the week, whether or not that's going to happen. That's on the 29th. So I think 20, the 28th is Friday. So hopefully we'll, we'll have something by the end of the week. So something else to, to, uh, to worry about. But that's, that's um, how the market is. There's always uncertainty um, out there and you can't really control it. Um, what I have in front of me is just the, the earnings calendar for next week. It's 30, I believe 37% of the S&P reports next week, so not even counting NASDAQ names, but 30, 37% of the S&P reports next week. So a really big week for earnings. We got some, some really, uh, some of the majors report next week um, once we get to, I think, what about Tuesday and Wednesday, um, but just, just a huge amount of companies that report. So... Um, you know, normally uh, for swing trading and, and just I've been saying this for the last couple of weeks, I'd like to just kind of see how things play out. You know, so so far um, we've already had a decent number of companies report and it seems like they're, they're coming out uh, for the most part pretty good. There's there's a couple misses in there, but I think that's always the case. You're always going to have names, you know, like, for example, I, IBM does that almost every quarter where they kind of move down, you know, maybe they move up kind of, you know, going into earnings and then they fall back down. So, but um, it seems like most of the names that are coming out are, you know, are certainly not that bad. But we do get Google. Uh, we get Amazon uh, reporting this week as, as well as a number of other big companies. So, um, you know, we'll be going through that all week long in the uh, Tribeca trade room. So if you're not a member, you know, th these are the trades that we're going to be concentrating on next week on a day by day. So um, I think for, for earnings plays, I think I'm, uh, going into Friday, I was two for two. Um, and I think I had a positive return on investment. You know, even sometimes when you're 50% in option trades, uh, the return on investment can be very uh, positive for you. So I think I was up about 32% uh, return on investment last week in earnings play. So I'll look to, to continue that streak uh, next week. So uh, for events next week, we also have just, just looking at economics. We have, um, sorry, I keep pulling up this, the same screen. It's ECO that I need. Uh, we do have some more housing data that comes out, new home sales. We also have the Case Schiller report or CoreLogic as they, they call it now for home prices. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, we also have some uh, durable goods preliminary data that comes out in the middle of the week. And then on Friday, we have GDP, uh, the GDP report that comes out. So, you know, we'll see. I, I think this, um, the trend kind of moved down a little bit in terms of, of economics. We saw a couple of reports that came out last week that were not so good. Um, and then going back to CPI and, and retail sales. You know, so we'll see if that continues to trend down. And if that happens, there could be less of a need for, for rate hikes. But again, I'm kind of, uh, you know, jumping ahead. We'll see what next week's, you know, one thing at a time. I think really the next interest rate hike that's kind of up in the air is uh, is June. So we've got a lot of data that's, that's going to come out uh, before that, including... Um, 
you know, we'll have another jobs report in a couple weeks. So, um, so that being said, we, we've got an awful lot of data next week. Um, looking at the, I want to jump into the technicals. Uh, on Thursday, the S&P, I have Spire, you can look at S&P futures, they're kind of the same thing. Um, in term, the technicals are basically, there's not much really changing here, but um, Thursday we got a, a back above the 50-day moving average. Um, Friday, then we've kind of fell down a little bit ahead of the weekend, which again to me makes makes a lot of sense when you've got, you know, a market event, which was the, which is the French election. People are not really wanting to add a lot of risk going into the weekend, especially with how the weekends have been going um, over the last month. So, is it a problem that we're under the 50-day moving average? I don't really think so. All it could take is basically one one day for us to get back above. But yeah, sure, I would keep an eye on it. Um, that's the white line here. That's the 50 moving average. Also notice for the value areas, uh, we're also just hanging on to the bottom of value. You know, we broke we broke below as well as that 50 day moving average and uh, we're sitting inside value. So, um, you know, so you got one one bad thing, the fact that we're below the 50, uh, but one good that we're in, uh, we're in value for the month. So, um, so really that level to watch um, for next week, which looks like it's going to be right around 234 and a half. Um, also, just kind of see if I can, um, we'll look to see if we're, we're going to open up in value. It's really, you know, when futures open up, um, you know, if they opened up right now, we'd be in value for the week. Notice what we did last week, um, opening up in basically in value. We kind of stayed in value all, all week long. Um, there were some really good tells last week, uh, you know, from, from Thursday as, as, as high as we got on Thursday. We did run into resistance here on the, on, again, I'm on the one hour uh, bar, but, you know, we hit resistance for the week, which was 23.55. Also, we hit a, what's known as a virgin point of control. Um, right here, I mean, this was a perfect tell. We talked about this in the trading room on Thursday where, you know, um, these VPOCs really act as um, memory in terms of where buyers and sellers had, had met up before. And uh, this was a VPOC that was generated, again, a version point of control, um, a point of control from another time frame that um, <clears throat> was where price never, uh, never actually went through. So they can often act as magnets, and that certainly happened on Thursday. And if you look, that's as high as we got on Thursday. We tagged that perfectly to a tick. And um, and retreated from from there. So a great place to take profits. Uh, we did that in a couple different spots in the in the trading room on Thursday. Um, what a great tell that was. Um, notice there is another one that lives up here, which has not been taken out yet. So could be something that ling lingers for next week. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll 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 see what uh, what happens. Too early to make any conclusions. Especially we'll see how when futures open up. So that's just a you know a lot about the S and P. Uh, if you look at Q's um, last week, and let me just zoom out to a daily chart. I, I, you know, we're really close to making an all-time high in the in the Q's. So, you know, as much as there's been, you know, um, the case in terms of a pullback and volatility going up the last couple of weeks. The cues are right there. You know, if we've get some good earnings reports out this week, um, again, Microsoft, Google, Amazon—they all report this week. You know, you could very well see the the uh, new high taken out. If the reports are bad, you know, maybe we we get back into that, uh, back into the April value area, which is um, so basically in cues the the area of support that you want to watch is uh, is right around this this 131.92 level. Um, small caps were a nice surprise uh, last week in terms of performance. Uh, if we go back to my newsletter, um, the performance for the uh, for small caps was up to 2.6 percent last week. So real out, real nice outperformance, and um, we'll see if that trend can continue. You know, for a while they've been making. Uh, I think I need to look at small cap futures I should have a trend line drawn but for a while small caps were making lower highs and lower lows and it looks like we got out of that trend last week um, so again still a lot of chop um, and still you know we really haven't taken this out this kind of looks like you know it almost looks like a uh, possible head and shoulders pattern where you got a, a left shoulder a head and a right shoulder but we don't know that yet um, so really levels to watch it so we're, we're right smack in the middle of the value area for April you know, I don't really like to, you know, try to draw conclusions about patterns. I would rather just watch levels and say, hey, you know, this is a great level to watch for a breakout. Um, so that's 1390. I guess if I'll, I'll bring this in terms of, I'll bring this, I'll show this in terms of um, IWM rather than futures. But uh, 
so if I just kind of zoom in here, I can see this level a little bit better. But right around 138.15, one, uh, 138 which is only a handle up right now in, in IWM. And then back on the downside, I would watch one 134.40. So if that pattern looks dangerous to you, that you know possibly head and shoulders might be, uh, might be forming here, I would really watch that uh, bottom of value. Um, that'll tell us, and and as well as this dotted line, which is a which, which is a trend line as well in IWM. But for now, take it for what it is. Um, they had a nice week of performance. The small caps last week. We'll see if that can uh, that can continue uh, next week. So that's the that's the major indices. Uh, the fact that these did not break down, I think, is a positive sign from from what we had a couple weeks ago. Uh, I so. I, th I think we, we took a step in the right direction. Um, if we if you look under the hood and look at sectors, uh, you know, a couple sectors, a couple of the stronger sectors made a new high towards the end of last week. Consumer discretionary, 52 week high on Thursday. So, you know, there are certain sectors which I'm going to go through that are looking weak and moving the other way. Um, you know, you just want to be cognizant that not everything is moving up right now. You know, back a couple of months ago, you had all sectors that were kind of breaking out and the market breadth was really strong. We don't have that right now. You, you have some sectors that look very good, that look pretty strong. And you've got other ones that, that um, don't look so hot. So I would avoid the, and, and, the, the way that I use this analysis is uh, I want to be in single names in strong sectors and I want to be in um, and I want to avoid or I want to short sectors that look like they're breaking down. So um, I'll continue with with the good and then we'll kind of get to the bad. Um, so XLY very strong. Um, technology very very strong as well so that's on the verge of getting back to the highs as well kind of stalled out at the top of value that um, this is the XLK the technology ETF so this is where the strength is um, industrials actually showed a little bit of strength last week as well they're back to the 50-day moving average um, that's the XLI ETF so just kind of order of in, you know in order of strength um, and then I would also throw semis in here as well I'm going to get to um, more detailed analysis in the SMH ETF in a second but you know this is where the, the the strength has been occurring I also like the robotic stocks they had a little bit of a dip last week um, so that's Robo that's a name that you've heard me talk about quite a bit over the last uh, what I'd say two months ago we had a webinar in the beginning of the month um, breaking down stocks like MZOR uh, which have really just been on, you know, on fire. So uh, we caught this one in the in the trading room. Uh, great job by by Pat in the trading room, uh, kind of going through and doing some more analysis on some of the um, some some of those robotic stocks that I mentioned. So then you kind of look to the bad. You know, the 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 financial media continues to be fixated on financials for whatever reason I don't know but it seems like you know whenever you turn on a financial program the first thing that they want to talk about is the banks I don't like them here I think they're moving sideways uh, I think Barron's was out as well this weekend saying it's a good time to buy the banks you know watch the 50-day moving average I think right now you're kind of caught between the 50 I don't have the 100 drawn on here but I think we're right in the middle of of the 100-day moving average as well there's no reason I think right now um, you know unless you want to select a couple names uh, we saw some some call activity in BAC, you know, very short dated last week. Uh, so, you know, you kind of stick to some names that are seeing a lot of uh, a lot of call activity. Again, very very short dated. This was just next week's calls that we saw. Um, there there was a total of, and again, very light in terms of um, in terms of option premium. You know, not the biggest trades in the world. When you look at the contract size, and you're like, "Oh wow, fifty-two thousand." Um, you look at the actual premium that they that they put up here, and it's 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 not that big, um, you know, versus other trades that we that we talk about. But this to me just looks like chop, and it's to me I would rather take a shot once we regain a moving average, not when we're. Um, not when we're breaking down. So let me see if I have a chart to bring up here in, in XLF, considering that's where all the focus is these days. Yeah, it's caught below the 100-day the moving average as well. You know, maybe if it reclaims the 100 and, and even the 50 in, in financials, then I would be more interested. But again, you have to think about what drives the, the financials and, and what's a good environment for banks. Uh, that's when, you know, you have a steepening yield curve and uh and we don't have that right now it's you know if we go i'm going to talk about bonds in just a second 
but it's, you know, last week, um, you know, bonds are on the move higher, um, maybe towards the 200 day moving average. So, you know, unless they start to get back below uh, this trend line that I've got drawn in, in, in bonds, uh, I don't really see a lot of catalyst. We talked, you know, I talked in the beginning of the video about whether or not we're going to get a rate hike. Uh, you know, pr the, the probability right now, I think of a rate hike occurring in June is um, in, 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 in May, it's 13%. In June, it's it's 50%. So it could really go either way. So these are the things that are going to be favorable for banks. So a 50% chance of a rate hike in June, which again, once we get more data, like the jobs report uh, that'll be coming out in the beginning of May, we'll know more about that. But um, it doesn't, this to me is not, does, does you know, if, if they said, hey, we're definitely going to get a few more rate hikes for the end of the year, if bonds were selling off, not not uh, not rallying, I would say that's great for financials. But um, uh, you know, I, I don't see it as a great environment uh, to own the banks right now. Did they? You know, for the most part, they did report good earnings. The the earnings are just about over, if not completely over, in the in the banks and the and the both larger and smaller. The earnings were fine. Uh, that happened, but um, I think you really want to have a, a good environment for the banks before you really commit. So for me, I'm watching the 50-day moving average and nothing really to do in that group. Sorry to spend so much time on that, but it's uh, it's so much um, in, in, in the media right now that I think it's good to talk about it a little bit. Um, other areas of the market, um, you know, the REITs have been pretty strong. Um, I continue to, you know, every day that I, I look at the recent you know, 50 day high list. Um, there are REITs that, um, that, that are keep coming up, that keep coming up in terms of, of making new highs. So um, IYR, you know, you could basically be long, continue to be long versus that uh, 200 day moving average. Um, so, you know, it looks like it's pausing here and we'll see if it goes higher. I really don't have any major positions on in this group at all. I put a small position on in an in individual name in uh, residential REITs. Uh, that's uh, CMO, Capstead Mortgage, um, and that's really my only exposure. Uh, besides that, I've got exposure to, speaking of uh, strong sectors, um, ITB, which is the home home construction ETF. Again, this ETF has much more home builders than XHB, so I prefer to look at this one. Um, I'm also long Lowe's, so it's kind of sticking with the market strength right now. Let's see if Lowe's can actually um, get above this recent high after you know the nice earnings report and it's kind of been going sideways since then. So um, starting to turn up here and, and breaking out. So just has to get over this resistance and uh, we've got some open road to lows. So um, those are the, the areas of strength. Um, ut utilities are gonna be, you know, obviously dependent on uh, what interest rates do. Um, besides that names that, if you go to my sector heat map here, um, then, you know, names on the lower side or names that are kind of caught in the middle, you know, XLV could see some volatility next week, depending on what they decide to do with uh, the repeal of Obamacare. Um, and then right now, energy, I think, you know, wanted to talk a little bit about oil in this video as well, because uh, it certainly has, uh, you know, stalled out, you know, right when it, we started to get back in this range, uh, we stalled out and really been going lower here. So, um, it looks like uh, you know either we pause here at the at the point of control in the middle of the of the April value area, um, or we could be headed back to, to the lows here. But this does this doesn't look like a strong environment, and and we've been seeing a tell, you know, even when sorry, let me go back to oil for a second. <clears throat> even when oil was rallying, the energy stocks were not. So. I really um, I'm avoiding this group right now. Uh, the whole group looks like it's still it's breaking down further. Again, the white line is the 200 day moving average. You can see the 50 is now crossing below the 200. Um, you know, if you want to short this group, I think that's your best your best case um, rather than I actually just don't I don't really want to be in the space at all. It just doesn't it looks uh, like it either may um, break down further or maybe it rises back up to the 200 you know tries to retest the 200 day moving average but it just doesn't look like where the strength is and i don't want to be in areas in the market that are not exhibiting strength so um so that's the weakest area of the market i would say or, or um in terms of sectors uh that is that is your weakest and you've got those breaking uh failed uh, considerably at the 200 day moving average um the metal space which rallied pretty hard last towards the end of last week um xme um, I did have something here in, in the XME that um, I thought was notable. 
which I may have lost it. Uh, so if you go to a multi-year chart, um, looking at, I think I even wanted to go back further to a 10-year chart. And if I could quickly draw a trend line here. Uh, you can kind of see what I mean. We This isn't perfect, but um, you basically can see that we rallied up to this this downward trend line, you know, great rally from in the in the beginning, uh, you know, basically the, through the last year. So we're holding the 200 day moving average, but notice where we stalled out right at that upward that downward trend line. So I would, um, you know, if you want to give a shot to 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 XME, this is the metals and mining ETF, a lot of steel names in here and a lot of uh, mining of especially gold mining names are in here. You know, you could try a long versus the 200 day moving average if it goes below, you know, make sure you, you take that. Uh, I, I personally would take off the long rather quickly, um, but I would also be watching this uh, this multi year downtrend line. Uh, for metals and mining, again, they 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 the reason why I'm talking about them is because they really uh, they had one day where they broke the I'll kind of use a different chart here. Um, they had one day one day where they broke the the 50 day moving average and they're uh, excuse me the 200 day moving average and they're they're holding quite nicely. Uh, but we'll see what they do next week. I also don't like how the 50 is is crossing below the 100. So, um, so you know, names like U.S. Steel, AKS, got a real nice bounce last week, but it may be short-lived. And again, I would really pay attention to that 200-day moving average. All right, so that's a quick review of the sectors. The one other sector I'm going to talk about a little bit more in detail is uh, the semis. And then we'll talk about a couple uh, country-specific ETFs. Again, sorry, there are lots to talk about um, this week. So this this week's video is a little bit longer. And um, I just thought it would be easier to go through this in a video rather than strictly in the news and all in the newsletter this weekend. But S, but SMH, this was something that we touched upon last week. Um, heavy volume, a break of the 50-day moving average. Um, but the one thing that, that I thought was notable was the fact that every time there's high volume, and you get a little bit of downward pressure in the in the semi ETF. It's been a great buying opportunity. So the, you know this particular time, I think we, we had some high volume here. We spent a little bit of time uh, breaking the 50-day moving average, got right back above it, retested it, and kept going. Same thing here. A touch of the 50-day moving average trend continued. Another big volume day here, and um, we breached the 50-day moving average and then re reclaimed it and kept going. So we kind of have the same thing going on here. Uh, we broke. We just recently broke the 50-day moving average on high volume, and um, you know this this um, chart below here is the inflows and outflows going to SMH. So look at all the big red bars. There was huge outflows. There was some very uh, nervous uh, investors, I would say, in semis, and they. So that's what caused this break below of the uh, for the price on the 50-day moving average. But we're, but we're right back above it. So. Um, we've done what we've done in the past, and I think now is a great time to be long the semis. And, and again, if it goes wrong, you've got the 50-day moving average as your as a quick stop. So um, I like this group. That's where the strength has been for the last year, um, and I like it as long as it stays above that purple line. If it breaks again, maybe it's time to um, it, it'll be time to bail on that trade. But um, just using the past year, every time it's broken that 50-day moving average and reclaimed it, it's been it's been a pretty good buy signal. Um, other things that I'm focused on for next week, or some some charts that I'm focused. By the way, you know I haven't I didn't talk much about um, ETF fund flows. They are they have really been quiet uh, the last couple of weeks. It's almost been as if there's a buyer strike that's happening. And um, you know, if you think about the, the rationale behind that, going into earnings season, a lot of a lot of times uh, traders and funds want to reduce a little bit of their exposure going into earnings season, uh, as well as all the geopolitical headlines that are that are bouncing around. So, you know, there really there hasn't been major outflows either. It just seems like there's a lot of money that's on the sidelines, and previously when this happens when there isn't money going into the market it usually ends up being a buying opportunity so um that's something that i'm watching uh, and i'm you know we'll wait for for money to start to be redeployed uh in in the marketplace first before i just say hey it's a contrarian buy signal um, i want to see some money started start to be added but um 
you know, basically for the, for the last two weeks, it's been very, very quiet, especially in the U.S. There's been no money uh, that's being added right now. And the SPY ETF continues to see outflows. I think on Friday there was another big outflow uh, for SPY. I think it was uh, $3.6 billion that came out of the SPY ETF on Friday. If you go back to my newsletter um, for the biggest outflows for the week, you could see SPY was actually had the had the biggest outflow for the week at five billion dollars. So clearly, um, you know, SPY is the, the the largest ETF out there in terms of assets, so it skews the numbers. But um, you know, big outflow last week, five five billion dollars coming out. Um, when you net it with all the other U.S. ETFs, equity ETFs, uh, flows were flat for the for the week. Um, obviously, so you could see, for example, SPY, uh, IWM, which outperformed last week, had a billion dollars of inflows last week. All right, so um, just other areas that I'm watching, uh, the Turkey ETF uh, is not something that may, uh, you know, an area of the market that may not be on, on your radar. Uh, you know, five-year trend line, downward trend line, uh, broken to the upside in TUR. And if you take a closer look at, uh, at the Turkey ETF, Um, you could see, I just want a one-year chart. You can see that the price is now above the 200-day moving average, above the 50-day moving average, and, uh, and you could see also the 50-day moving average is crossing above the 200, so golden cross. So I think um, taking a shot here in Turkey versus maybe the 50-day moving average, which is you know about two bucks, if you get stopped, uh, 37.88, you're looking at right around 36, so almost you know, two dollars that you could possibly lose if you do get stopped out of the trade. But um, want to ride this, especially seeing the bigger picture. Uh, this downward trend line being violated uh, here. So I have no position on right now in TUR, but something that I'm looking to add in the beginning of the week. Um, also, a similar uh, move in the Malaysia ETF. That's EWM uh, now above the major moving averages. Um, and EM. Uh, this is something that's been kind of uh, has been falling down a little bit over the last couple of weeks. Not that's probably not the right term to use, but uh, it's been I would say consolidating a little bit to the downside. Ran into the 50-day moving average support, um, and I'm looking to see if that holds. I just really didn't want to put on a big position before the weekend, but something that I'm looking to do in the beginning of the week. Um, so I still like emerging markets. Um, gold continues to see inflows. Uh, another 404 million dollars of inflows that. Uh, that were added last week. That's on top of the previous week of 514 million inflows. So you add those two together and, and it's almost a billion dollars of inflows into gold in the last two weeks. Uh, we did see uh, some call buying in a, a couple days last week, but mostly on Friday. Uh, I've got a couple trades highlighted, but there was some September, some, so, and further out, September uh, GLD calls that went up. So, you know, a lot of times when, when we're reading option activity, I like to see if it's if it's somebody just taking action or hedging for like a week out. This situation, you know, somebody, it appears to be that they bought 3,000 contracts for $4. You know, that's a decent sized trade. Uh, where is the premium on this? Uh, why don't I see that? Yeah, but about 1.2 million dollars. Here it is, right here. 1.2 million dollars in terms of uh, in terms of premium. So that's no small trade, and they're not. They're also not going out to something like next week. You know, for example, we talked about BAC. They're basically just going out, maybe looking for for um, a short term bounce. Um, so that's fine. Uh, you know, you could play things for a short term bounce and. If it doesn't happen, you're going to lose all your premium um, choosing to take that particular trade. Um, you obviously have a choice to just own this stock outright. But, you know, if they don't get that short term bounce in BAC, they're not going to care too much. They're only in that trade for, for a week. So I, I rely on the signals that where somebody's putting down, they have the view that something is going to go up over a longer term, not just a quick short-term pop um, so they're and they're putting down a bigger chip uh, going out to September um, there was also speaking of uh, TUR sorry to kind of jump jump around but there was some some August calls that were bought so somebody else likes turkey besides me uh, 
there was some calls versus puts being um, so uh, excuse me uh, there was a spread that went up not, not a put sale there was 3,000 of the August 35 calls that were bought for 367 versus the August 38 calls uh, at 182 so you could either play this in cash or that's an example of a spread that you could put on going out to August playing an uptrend um, by using this in terms of a, a call spread you're, you're obviously you're limiting the amount of premium that you have to put out there so um, that's a three dollar wide spread that they put in place on the turkey ETF Um, what else did I think was notable in terms of um, in terms of trends? You know, lumber is something that I've been watching for the last few months. Um, lumber continues to go higher, and then a lot of the lumber stocks are also moving in a nice uptrend. Uh, WY, which uh, saw a this name reports next week, so it could be that they bought some calls for for earnings. Uh, they they bought these a couple times on Friday or aggressively. Um, the April April 28, 35 calls. So again, they report next week. So maybe maybe someone is, is looking to speculate on their, their earnings report and looking for some upside in Wirehauser, but a really nice looking chart. And then another one that I like is BCC, Boise Cascade. That's also been moving up pretty nicely. Um, and then I did give a shot in this name a couple weeks ago. This is a much smaller name, but also has exposure to, to, to uh, forest products, I think is what... Um, bring up the description here uh, manufacturers newsprint coated and uncoated ground wood papers bleached craft pulp so they're and lumber products so they're in that um, they're in that industry as well so um, you know that's a name I gave a shot at versus the 200 day moving average hasn't really done much uh, since I put the trade on but that's about it you know other notable trades that we saw on Friday um, and I'll just talk about uh, some of the European ETFs and then, uh, again, longer than usual video for today. But um, I think there, there's a lot to cover. You know, we did see some TLT call buying. Um, another trade, so I mentioned SMH. There was a, sorry, again, I'm bouncing around all over the place. Um, there was a really nice S, a longer dated semi uh, call buying, November 80, 88 calls that went up. Um, they split this trade into two. Uh, November 88 calls purchased for $1.05 and then uh, they also came in a little bit later and added another 4,000 contracts making 10. So again, just as I went over that SMH chart and, and saying every time it breaches the 50 day moving average and reclaims it, it's done pretty well in the last year. I guess someone else is also sharing that view. Uh, that's a 12% uh, move considering the strike that they, um, that they went after. And I do have that in uh, this weekend's newsletter. Yeah, one million dollar in uh, in option premium and expecting a twelve percent move by uh, by November expiration. Um, so the last thing that I'll cover is you know there was some some definite um, activity in the French ETF last week. Look at the volume. This is EWQ. Uh, so it does look like there were some withdrawals. There was one day of inflows, but a lot of withdrawals, two, two big days of withdrawals. Um, and this was a similar pattern in, in a couple of the other uh, European ETFs. If you look at the Euro Financials, which is EUFN, um, you could see that there was some withdrawals as well. Look at the volume uh, in this as well. So um, I think people took advantage on Thursday. Uh, that was mainly Thursday and Friday, but, but a lot of uh, Thursday, if you go to like... Um, the Fez ETF as well, and you could see the volume um, on Thursday kind of explode here, and you could see that uh, we weren't able to hold the gains on Thursday. So I think that there was there was no major outflows. I think sometimes it takes a couple days to see the inflows and outflows. Uh, it really depends on the dealer when they want to create or redeem, but usually it's a couple days. But my guess is that somebody uh, cashed in on some some uh, some profits and and. Put some money on the sidelines in some of the European ETFs. So uh, we'll see what we get later today. And um, that's today's video. You know, again, I think this this week will really be focused on um, a couple of those events that we mentioned, as well as just mainly earnings. Just a th like I said, 30, 37 percent of the S and P reports this week. Um, so if you're not a member of Tribeca Trade Group, please go ahead and uh, and sign up and 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 check us out, uh, as we will be going through a lot of earnings trades. Um, something where we're not going to be 
we're looking for the right risk to reward scenarios where we're not putting up a lot of capital, but if they happen to, if there's big moves, uh, we're going to capitalize on it. So um, that's what we'll be focused on this week in the Tribeca Trade Room. Thanks very much for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend.